Hey everyone, been a while since I made a video. Hope you're staying safe out there. Crazy times we're in. Where I live, uh, everything's closed down. The trails are all closed down, the beaches and forests and all the natural areas, all closed down. Can't go outside to do pretty much anything except for shopping for the essentials, getting gas, and uh, like walking your dog. Which kind of sucks for me because on the weekends I like to go out and uh, I like to go mushroom hunting. I like to go out into the woods and forage for wild edible mushrooms. So since I can't do that right now, I decided what better way to get my wild mushroom hunting fix than with Breath of the Wild, right? Um, so today what we're going to do is we're going to go through Breath of the Wild. We're going to take some time and we're going to photograph and find as many of the uh, mushrooms in the game as we can. As we can. And uh, we're going to use this handy book called Everything the Rain Promises and More by David Aurora. We'll be using it to figure out what the mushrooms in Hyrule would actually be in real life. So, yeah. Um, let's get into it. All right, so we're going to start our uh, our foraging in Hateno Village. There's actually quite a few decent spots to find some good mushrooms around here. So I'm checking behind uh, behind the buildings, around the trees. Uh, oftentimes, you know, in real life, mushrooms will grow pretty much anywhere. Uh, it's actually really easy to find some really cool, really uh, really great tasting mushrooms just uh, in the city. Uh, one of my favorite kinds, uh, the morel, it will grow in just in people's yards. It's a rather rare mushroom, but you can find it in surprisingly common areas. But we're going to head down here. So down here in the outskirts in the forest, uh, it's actually a really good spot for some pretty... Some pretty decent mushrooms you can get down here. So, start with the iron shroom. This is a really good. This is a really good mushroom to start with. So I don't even really need to look up to know exactly what this mushroom is. Uh, this is very obviously uh, an analog to the king bolete or the porcini, as it's also known. People love this mushroom. It's an edible mushroom. It tastes really good. And they're very easily identifiable. They have a thick bulbous stalk, just like the iron shroom and a large to medium sized cap, again, just like the iron tree. And uh, they're also found in woodlands, just like uh, where we are right now. So yeah, there's our first find of the day. Let's keep going. All right, here's another one. So this is a super common mushroom in Hyrule, obviously. It's the Hylian mushroom. Uh, these grow all over. We'll take it to a spot to where we can maybe look at it a bit closer. The Hylian mushroom obviously resembles a very popular mushroom, the Amanita muscaria. Uh, we all know what it looks like. It's the big red Amanita mushroom with the uh, whitish yellow uh, spots at the top. And the Hylian mushroom has essentially that, if we look at the, at the cap, it matches that description in many ways. It doesn't have the ring um, and it doesn't have some of the uh, other very defining characteristics of the Amanita muscaria, but the Amanita muscaria is technically not edible. In fact, it's poisonous. So I don't think that's what the Hylian mushroom is, simply because if we look at it, it restores your health, doesn't take it away. Now it says here that uh, they're found near trees around Hyrule. So we're going to try to maybe find a replacement. If it's not an Amanita muscaria, let's figure out what it is. Given its red cap, it's slightly darker gills, but lighter stem. I think we're looking at the King Stropharia, which is a uh, an edible mushroom, people tend to like it. It's uh, relatively common, uh, depending on where you live. And it has that, like, just iconic mushroomy look to it. Kind of that, you know, that roundish domed cap, kind of burnt orangey color. It, it, I think this matches actually really well. Um, I was almost thinking that maybe this was, this could be a Russula or some kind of bolete again but uh no i'm, th I'm thinking this is uh this is the king strafaria the only thing that maybe it, the hylian shroom lacks compared to the king strafaria is that uh, it doesn't have a ring but um or it doesn't have a veil uh ring um but yeah pretty much it, it nails everything else uh, cap wine red reddish brown surface of cap uh sticky or slimy when moist uh nothing no like uh hairs or texture to the cap um, 
the stock is at least half an inch thick, white when fresh, these obviously white, and uh, yeah, we could maybe assume that some of that uh, discoloring, uh, that yellow coloring, is more uh, some, some texture, which the Kring Strafaria has. It has a fairly widespread range. It grows uh, a lot of places, and it's uh, highly common uh, in the Pacific Northwest where I live. Um, yeah. That one was easy. All right. This area is just like stocked. Yeah, if you're just playing the game and you're trying to you know, stock up on some mushrooms, the forest outside of Hateno Village, good spot. Really good spot. And honestly, that's just how it is in real life. You don't have to go out that far to find, you know, mushrooms. I mean, they probably are growing in your backyard. Don't eat them. But they're probably there. You can, you know, look up based on what they look like, uh, what kind of mushrooms they might be. Uh, finding edible mushrooms, depending on where you live, isn't always that hard. You know, do your research, go out with your book or with a guide, go out with people who know what they're doing. Stick to easily identifiable species that don't have any, you know, lookalikes, you know, poisonous lookalikes. Um, it's easy to sometimes get excited and think you found, you know, exactly what you're looking for only to eat it and uh, end up with extremely intense gastrointestinal pain and uh, if you're really unlucky a trip to the emergency room so you know do your research be smart be prepared don't just go eating stuff all right so kind of cheating a little bit here kind of exhausted the area we were in so I'm uh, if memory serves me right I'm heading to a spot uh, fairly early on in the game where you can find uh, a rather iconic mushroom for this game. We'll see if we get lucky and they have in fact sprouted. All right, so right up there is what I've been looking for. I don't want to fall off the edge here. Let's see. Okay, this is the rush room. Um, so we're going to climb up the side of this cliff to get it, but it's interesting to note that it's growing out of the side of the uh, of the cliff here. So we can see kind of under there it has it has some gills, but the gills don't look quite like they do on other mushrooms. Um, and the top it kind of bows out, kind of cr uh, crinkly. Um, I have two potential identifications for what the what the rush room could potentially be. I think it could be some type of oyster mushroom. Um, so let's let's look that up first. Okay, so oyster mushrooms are really common. You often see them growing um, on logs and things like that. They're often for sale in uh, grocery stores and stuff like that. Um, I and my girlfriend, we have even cultivated them. Uh, they're they're really easy to grow if you're interested in growing mushrooms just as a food source. There are really handy uh, growing kits that are like you know between ten and thirty dollars, and you can get like a pretty nice batch, couple good batches out of that. Um, it's a very common mushroom, and people really like them. They taste really good. Okay, so let's let's take a look at at uh, the oyster mushroom and see if it if it might fit the rush room. So the first thing, first knock against it, it often grows shelf-like, which we see here, kind of that flat, clustered growth pattern to it, but it grows on dead trees, logs, and stumps, and this is growing out of seemingly the side of a cliff. So that's a knock against it. However, I mean, this is, this is, you know, for fun, so we can, we can fudge it if we need to. Um, cap medium size to large. It's pretty big. Uh, there's no veil, ring, or vulva. The spore is whitish or tinged lilac. Uh, we can see some, obviously the cap is purple, um, and the underside, if we look, there's some there's some purpliness to it. So I think that's that's a, a, a point to it. Um, gills white or at least pale, running down the entire stock. That's not what we're seeing here. It looks like the gills terminate like at the cap. So despite the shape of the cap and the fact that it's not growing on dead trees, I think this actually is a pretty good Mat. But I want to try one other mushroom before I call it. And that would be one of my favorites, and one of the easiest to get into, the chanterelle. 
So um, there are several different types of chanterelles. Uh, they have kind of an uneven wavy cap to it, just like we see on the rush room here. A lot of them have like a weird little indentation in the middle, which you can kind of see sort of that inside star pattern kind of uh, being an analog for, I think at least. So there's the normal chanterelle, which has got kind of less burnt orangey color. Then there's the white chanterelle, which is white, and the yellow foot chanterelle, which I think this resembles in some important ways other than its coloring. So chanterelles, they all have this weird kind of wavy, uneven uh, gills. Now maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like, let's see, I feel like it's got some wavy gills under all those, right? They don't look even. Um, and so that to me makes me think that maybe we're looking at a chanterelle here. Now the thing is the chanterelle gills, while they're wavy and weird and uneven compared to the uh, more uh, uniform bladed gills that we often see under uh, mushrooms, um, they tend to go down the entire stalk, which we might see evidence of. It's a really low resolution model, we can't tell entirely, but maybe that's what's happening there. But the yellow foots, they kind of terminate partway down the stalk. So that I think is a point, once again, in, in chanterelle's favor. Plus just the shape. Uh, just about every chanterelle out there has an odd shape to its cap. And I think another point in favor of this being a chanterelle of some kind is its coloring. Now, like I was saying, the um, traditional chanterelles have that burnt orange color. Yellowfoots, they're yellow. White chanterelles are white. But then there's the pig's ears, which can have kind of a purplish tinge to them. We definitely see that here. However, I think that this might be some sort of black trumpet or blue chanterelle, both of which are totally edible despite their kind of ominous dark fleshy color. Um, I think that the black trumpet with its slightly paler uh, stem and darker top is a pretty close match. It also has that weird like domed opening in the middle of its cap, kind of like that star shape we see here. So yeah, I think that actually instead of a an oyster mushroom, I think this is a chanterelle and it's either a pig's ear or it's a black trumpet. Um, so yeah, uh, that is another one. Let's go ahead and uh, let's make sure we pick a few, right? So the other thing about chanterelles is they often grow um, out of the side of hills and stuff, and sometimes even cliff sides uh, if it's the, you know, if the soil's proper. So uh, chanterelles are definitely a good one to look out for, and if you find a good chanterelle spot, you can sometimes find hundreds of these things growing out of the side of a hill or something. Um, so yeah. Now the thing not many re people realize is that uh, the mushroom that we pick and eat isn't actually the full organism. Uh, in reality, the majority of the organism lives underground in these tiny, tiny single-celled um, threads that stretch sometimes for miles. Uh, uh, definitely feet uh, for the most part. So oftentimes when you're picking a mushroom of the same type uh, and you find one uh, within you know a few feet of one another, you're actually picking the fruiting bodies of the same organism, kind of like uh, picking the berry off of this off of the same bush, if that makes sense. Okay, looks like we've found. All right, finally found it, the hardy truffle. So, says it right in the name. This is a truffle. Uh, there are actually two truffles, as we can see. There's the big hardy truffle and the hardy truffle. Since we found one, we'll just go ahead and uh, we'll talk about both now. So um, truffles in Breath of the Wild, just like in real life, truffles are truffles. They are unmistakable. They look like truffles. They smell like truffles. They, um, they're entirely unique mushrooms. Uh, they're also extremely prized, so the truffles that you find in the Pacific Northwest are probably going to be uh, the Oregon White Truffle. Um, those will get you hundreds of dollars um, on the market, whereas the black truffles that you find often in Italy and other parts of Europe, those can go for thousands of dollars. Uh, they're extremely hard to find though. Uh, they grow in very specific conditions, under the ground, and um, Hunter, uh, truffle hunters will often employ the use of a, of a dog or uh, traditionally pigs. Uh, truffles are very particular about when they are actually fully ripe um, and 
while they have a very distinct, almost gasoline-like smell, human uh, olfactory senses are nowhere near as good at telling the ripeness of a truffle uh, compared to a pig or a, or a dog. All right, so just like in uh, real life, sometimes when you're uh, having trouble finding new species or something specifically you're looking for, one of the best things you can do is just change where you're looking entirely and uh, maybe try out a slightly different environment or slightly different habitat just to see what you might find. So um, we'll give this last spot uh, a quick look over. Maybe we'll find maybe we'll find something new. We've found most of the species in the uh, that the game has in it already. So there's not too many more to find, but we still have at least one or two that we have not spotted today. One of the best things to do is if you're having trouble finding mushrooms is just look for other ones, you know? Uh, if one kind of mushroom grows there, it's very likely that other ones do too. Okay, what is this? A sun shroom. We found those already? We haven't. All right. So I think this will be our last identification for the day. Um, let's give it a look. All right, the sun shroom. Look at that. Nicely burnt orange cap, some uh, slight marbling, uh, a, a yellowy orange stem, and then a lighter uh, gills underneath. So we'll use those characteristics to make our initial identification. Gills. I think this is going to be another difficult one. There are a lot of mushrooms out there that look like a sun shroom, and a lot of them are inedible, whether that be because they're bland and they don't taste very good, they have bad texture, or they're just straight up poisonous or even deadly. Um, there are a lot of orangish beige mushrooms out in the world. So I'm definitely going to find an analog here, but um, if you're a beginner especially, I would avoid trying to uh, find edible orangish beige mushrooms that look like this. There's just too many poisonous lookalikes out there. That said, I think we're actually looking at some sort of uh, russula or milk cap, just given its size and characteristics. My best guess is this is either a bleeding milk cap or a delicious milk cap. Uh, considering that the sunshroom is imbued with the power of heat, uh, that leads me to believe that it might have a bit of a spiciness to it. And both the uh, bleeding milk cap and the delicious milk cap have a very distinct, subtle pepperiness to it. So. I think, given its color, size, shape, and the fact that it has been imbued with the power of heat, I think we're looking at either a bleeding milk cap or a delicious milk cap. All right, guys, well, I think that's going to do it for uh, part one of my mycological adventure through Hyrule. Uh, I might do another one of these. We'll see. There's still a few other species we have yet to find um, and identify. So, um, yeah, uh, thanks for joining me. If you like this, you know subscribe, leave a comment, reach out uh, on Twitter and all that. And, um, you know, I, I hope maybe it inspired you to uh, find other ways to enjoy uh, your time indoors and maybe even encourage you to uh, give mushroom hunting a try, uh, you know, once we can finally go back outside. Anyway, guys, stay safe uh, and uh, yeah, expect more videos soon. Thank you.